I want to welcome everybody to episode two of Check Your Shelf podcast. My guest today, I am so excited that she's here. It's my friend Krista Martin, who is possibly the most well-read person I have ever known. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) Your Goodreads is intimidating. I was scrolling Um, through. I don't know if I would call it well-read. It's a lot of red, but it's not, <laughs> not all of it is any kind of quality at all. So, yeah. A lot of fluff, a lot of junk. <laughs> I was, I was scrolling back through to see like what books we had read, like the same, like the books we had in common. And I, it was like, I scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. And then I looked at the date and I had only gone back through like September 15th. Yeah. So how do you read so much? So I will tell you that my, I did not read this much up until just a few years ago, probably right at the, I mean, I've always read a lot. I've always read books. I've always had a book in my hand. And then I went through a period of time where I didn't read as much. And then when the pandemic hit, I started reading more and reading more because what else are we doing? And then I started reading books. I started reading two at a time. So I would have a book like a physical book and then I would have a book on my at the time my iPad and then I've since got a Kindle um so I always have at least two books going at one time and so I went from and there you know there's some months where I read four books one book and then there's some months where I read 10 11 13 books because it just depends on what's going on and how busy I am but I'll read a lot at night I read a lot on the weekends and the mornings um like I will wake up at seven o'clock on a Saturday morning and go oh okay it's a good time to read a book and then I will very in the very quiet hours read sometimes a whole book on a Saturday (laughs) Um, I have ADHD so I always feel like I have to have like the perfect circumstances to read right and a lot of times I um I will listen to the audio book when and along while I'm reading the book, but um, it takes up it takes up a lot of time. And I'm always I'm always interested in people who um, don't have to do that <laughs> and can speed read. You don't speed read though, right? I or don't skim. necessarily speed read, but I'm a fairly fast reader. I tend to to soak in everything, um, but I wouldn't call myself a speed reader. Again, I'm just so excited that you're here because um, when we decided to start the podcast, I knew it would be, as we were approaching the fall, I was like, I'm going to want Krista here to talk about all of the horror books and thriller books. Because you because yes. thriller and horror, I guess we should start out like kind of defining those genres. Like, yes. how do you think they're the same and how do you think they're different? The way I put it, most of the thriller books that I read are very similar to a Lifetime movie. It's always um, a woman in a situation, and then maybe her sister got murdered, um, and she has to go to a creepy castle to solve the murder. Um, That is a majority of the thrillers that I read are either that or YA thrillers. Um, But uh, I say I think a thriller is more... um, of a murder or a kind of getting into a serial killer but more realistic um and then with a horror i think that you are a little bit maybe there's a little bit more supernatural or you get even into a slasher element um so i think that is how i would differentiate okay okay i think those are good definitions and i I agree with all of that i'm reading um (laughs) it's not the final girl support group it's the riley sager one riley sager yeah oh i would i consider a lot of the riley sagers thriller but he does get right on the edge of horror and with that one especially and his latest one um the house across the lake he goes Mm -hmm. jumps that line straight into horror and I love him. (laughs) Final Girls was the first one I read. I actually have read them in order as they came out. And I, that was the first one I read. And I read it because I saw a Twitter recommendation from Stephen King. And we'll get into that, I'm sure, in a little bit. uh, Because that's what started all of this. When I saw that, I said, oh, okay, I'm going to read this book. Um, I think I read it in like a day. And then the, as soon as he would come out with a book, I start reading them. And he's one of my favorites right now. Absolutely one of the best. Very close to, very, reminds me a lot of the things that 
we grew up reading, like your Christopher yeah. Pikes and your um, Lois Duncan, and it reminds me of that. It gives me, it's like, oh, this is for what the ones that started out reading those. Um, that's what we read now. That's he's giving us books as, to read as adults. <laughs> And so his books, though, are not, it's not a series, right? I'm not reading yeah. number one in a no, series. No, 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 no. Okay. But each, each one, they, it kind of, when you start reading them, the titles sound a lot alike. Um, and you can see each book is about a completely and totally different thing. It almost takes a different part of a genre. Um, like, to me, Home Before Dark is more of your haunted house. Um, uh, the one that, let's see, Lock Every Door is very much almost a secret society, um, kind of thing. And it, each one has its own little thriller, horror genre niche. Okay. So then, um, so with Final Girls, you'd say that would be, I mean, um, more of a slasher it's type a slasher. situation. It really is. Yeah. Um, and just in case our, we have listeners who haven't read that one yet, that is about three adult survivors of so serial would, killer I, attacks. I would call yeah. serial killers. Okay. And then how they've connected in the future and, um, and what comes, what happens because of that connection. Yes. Um, and then I wanted to ask you about the house across the lake. Like everybody oh, has been talking about that one. What is that about? Um, so this is the new one that just came out this summer. And I'm telling you, when I read it, I sat, I was reading parts of it. And when it got to one of the major twists, I sat up in bed and said, what did I just read? What did I just read? Um, because with him now, certain books I, or certain authors, I will read on my Kindle. I will go through the Libby app and get it from the library, but there are two authors that as soon as the book comes out on the shelf, I'm there buying it, and he is one of them. Um, the other is Grady Hendrix. Um, but with Riley Steger, I'm going to bring that book home. I'm going to finish reading whatever I've got reading right now, and that's going to be the exact next one. So I think, you know, a couple days after I bought it, I started reading it. I sat up in bed and I said, I cannot believe what I'm reading. This is insane because <laughs> it goes a place that his books haven't gone before. And it takes a crazy turn, but it's well so well written that it's perfect. And it's more of a, um, I would consider it, it starts out very much a thriller about a woman who thinks that she sees possible murder. And then things go from there, but it does not end up anywhere near that. Do you prefer, if you had to choose between who is the better writer, Riley Sager or Grady Hendrix, who would you choose? Um, Grady, it, Grady Hendrix is a better horror writer because he can describe gore in a way I've never seen it written. Um, so he, I would say he's a better horror writer. Riley Saker might be a better writer overall, but I, I, Grady has a special place in my heart because I didn't know really, you know, I've, I've read horror and thriller, that's pretty much all I read, but I didn't know I liked books that gory and descriptive until I read his, and I'm like, oh, this is good. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> so have you noticed, like, this because this is something that I've discovered about myself. Like as I've gotten older, I used to like horror was my very favorite movie genre, yes. and and now I've kind of had I've had to back off like the really scary grody stuff. But I want my it's, it's totally okay in a book, but watching it is mm. is more difficult than it used to be. How is it for you? So it, yes, yes and no. I still watch just as much horror as I always have, but some of the things I'm. As I've gotten older, I'm, I can't do a whole lot of body horror. Um, just nothing with eyeballs. Absolutely nothing with eyeballs. Um, so I am a little pickier when it comes to that. Um, and I also find that when I watch movies or TV at home, I'm always doing a thousand different things besides watching the movie or TV. So I don't really notice it as much because I'm on my phone or I'm knitting or I'm doing something else. I've never been able just to sit and watch television. Um, 
so I'm always doing something else in conjunction. So I think I don't notice it as much on certain things, and then I'll go back and watch something and go, oh, oh, no, I, that's too much. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely can handle it a whole lot more in a book than I can on TV. Well, and then speaking of TV, and I go, well, and you'll have to correct me because I may be wrong about this. Are they not making a Netflix series or a Hulu series uh, based off of My Best Friend's Exorcism? Um, Amazon Prime. It was a movie, and it came out on at the end of September. Um, it is good. Uh, my Best Friend's Exorcism is probably my favorite book of the last 10 years. Um, so it had a lot of, it had a lot to prove. It was cute. It was funny. Um, it was not what I was expecting and what I wanted exactly, but I enjoyed it. It has the best cover that I've seen in a long time. It too. has the best cover of a book and I, I absolutely adore it. I read it again. I had read it several years ago and then to get ready for the movie, I read it again and I'm like, oh, I forgot huge parts of this and how much I enjoyed it. So then as I was scraping my way through your Goodreads huh. list, um, you have uh, finished a book that I have not even attempted yet because like the audio book is 24 hours long, but I want to read it so bad. Um, and I'm, because I'm hearing mixed reviews about it and it's the new Stephen King book, fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you give us a review on it? I absolutely will. Because I am going to tell you, I've read Stephen King since I was, 12 years old. I've, I haven't read nearly all of them yet because there are just so many. Um, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to get this one. I got it from the library. I said, I'm going to just, it's, it's huge. I'm going to just power through it. And it's probably one of my favorite ones he's ever written. Um, he can write about dogs better than anybody he can make you just fall in love with a dog and in this book he does uh it is all about this relationship with this dog and this boy and this man and it is so charming and heartwarming that that relationship carries you through the whole thing and i just it took me a while. To, it took me about a week to read it, um, but it it's so worth it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to move it up my to read oh, list. So you, good. You used a word just now, um, and I love that you did in relation to Stephen King because it's not one that you normally hear, but heartwarming. Yeah. And some of his he has such he develops his characters so well. And have you read Elevation? No, it's and, on my. It's on my shelf. The top shelf of my bookshelf right here is all Stephen King's that I haven't read. Um, and so it's um, it's on that shelf. I need to read that one. You need to read it. Yeah, it is so, it, it's heartwarming is what it is. Um, <laughs> I had a friend uh, who was like, I'm really, I've been bummed out this week. Like, can you recommend something for me to read? And I recommended Elevation. And she was like, that's a Stephen King book. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> but it's not your normal Stephen King book. So yes, totally read it. I think you'll love it. Um, so what are, give me some of your other favorite Stephen King books. My all time favorite Stephen King book is Gerald's game. Um, it was one of the first ones that I read and I've never, I mean, it's just, it's, it blew me away. It absolutely blew me away. Um, I can, I was probably 18. I think now I'm younger than that. I was probably 16 when I read it. And I can remember sitting there going, this is so unlike anything I've ever read in my entire life. And I love it. And I always have. Um, and then Carrie, of course, um, because I think that should be required reading or watching for all teenagers. Um, and I love, I haven't read them all yet, but I love um, Mr. Mercedes and that, little series because I like his take on a police procedural mm -hmm. um, because it's a mix of you know horror and law and order and what can be more perfect than that did you read the outsider no I have not read that one did you watch the show? I did not because I was gonna read it first the show was I thought the show was 
phenomenal. Okay. Uh, honestly, the only reason I jumped into it without reading the book was because Jason Bateman was attached to it, and I tend to yeah. just watch anything he does. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was it was it was really really well done, and it was one of those situations where I'm kind of glad I watched the show first, and, and I still haven't I still haven't read the novel, but I think that it's going to kind of help flesh out some of the characters. Some oh cool um, okay. But yeah, it's, it was really, really good. Um, I think what it, is her name? Cynthia Arrivo. She played yes. Aretha Franklin. She is fantastic. You know how sometimes you watch something and you're like, "Am I am I watching somebody get an Emmy?" Like, like I just felt like she deserved an Emmy nomination for it so much. She was so good. Um, I love his older stuff. Um, it's funny you bring up the dog um, from Fairy Tale. One of my favorite older novels of his is Cujo. I love it. And and like what you know, you everyone you know as a growing up, you watch the movie. You know, um, probably when you're not supposed to. And mm-hmm. and then you when you read the book, and so much of the book is told from the perspective of the dog, mm-hmm. and it's like it's a completely different experience it's yes. it's sadder like it's so much sadder than than the movie I think and I heard on that I'm glad you said that because reading the book and watching the movie and I've watched the movie recently uh, I heard someone on another podcast and I cannot remember which one it was um, say that the older you get the more you've like when you're a kid, could just scary. That's a scary dog. But the older you get, you feel so bad for Cujo because he didn't ask for any of this. And I think the book really puts that into perspective and makes you go, oh, that's, no, this is bad. <laughs> I feel bad yeah. for this poor dog. Somebody else's yeah. dog. <laughs> <laughs> Um, probably one of the ones that I, is is still the scariest. I know it is the scariest one um, for me is Salem's Lot. Mm-hmm. I, I've read it every ten years just to see if it still is scary, and it yes. always is. And I'm not even scared of vampires. Like that's nope. that like vampire movies don't scare me. Other vampire books do not scare me. But there is something mm-hmm. away something about the way he he writes that book, and he gets you attached to the right characters, yes. and then the next thing you know, it's like that we know this the things that they're dealing with are so terrifying and the imagery of his books or you know that one I think it's just a really great example of how he excels at putting those really scary images and I know like you know a lot of people remember in the well, people our age and older the mini series where the kids floating outside the oh, window yeah. and like how yeah. scary terrifying <laughs> terrifying I watch I usually watch the miniseries every couple of years. Like if I catch it on or if I catch it like streaming or something, I'll watch it. So it's on Shutter right now. And I kept saying, okay, it's, you know, that's what I'm going to be one of my movies for October. And I'm just going to, like you said, with reading the book, I'm going to just going to see if it's still as scary because it always is. <laughs> <laughs> I want to shift gears now and talk about one of my favorite um, young adult authors, um, and it's Karen M. McManus. Yes, <laughs> all and of I them. Saw yes. You had you had several on your Goodreads. I yeah. have not read the brand new one. In fact, I almost picked it up today because Target had their buy one get one half off sale, and I almost picked it up. But I thought, you know, I'm going to wait because I had two others in my hand. Um, but I absolutely love her. Yeah. When I was reading her first book, That One of Us is Lying, which mm-hmm. stayed on the YA bestseller list for some, it was like some ungodly amount of time, like two or three years. It was crazy. Um, that is one of the best debut novels I think I've ever read. Um, and then and then, then saying that, I thought the follow-up to Can Keep a Secret was even better. So in One of Us is Lying, I guess we should maybe tell people what that's about. Um it's, it's a group of kids, and they're in detention, and one of the kids is murdered, like, basically, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Like, in, yes. And it's only, like, these the six kids in a room together, um, and, you know, the, different people assume different ones had a hand in it, and the kids are trying to figure out, like, what happened. Um, but then in Two Can Keep a Secret, it's... Um, 
there is a mystery involving teenagers, but it takes place in this small town where, like, the adults you start finding out are, like, interconnected, and they all have these crazy backstories, and it's, you know, the kids' parents and stuff, and um, she, I feel like she really knocked it out of the park with that. The only one of hers that I have read that I was, I don't even want to say I wasn't crazy about it, because I liked it when I read it, but I don't think I would read it again, is The Cousins. Did I you was about to say the same thing. I liked it when I read it. I don't know if I would read it again, and I might read the rest of them again. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and the, if you like audiobooks, or if you're ever on a road trip and you need an audiobook, the audiobooks are fantastic. Okay, like the narrators okay. that, yeah, that they hire to do the different, um, the different voices because the books are all the ones that I've read are told from you know the perspectives of different people. Like each chapter is a different person. And the cousins wasn't bad. It was just it was another family mystery kind of situation. Mm-hmm. And it what it just didn't feel to the same level as the others and the other like you were talking about with two can keep a secret and the whole storyline with the parents and the backgrounds it gives a very much a nightmare on Elm Street vibe because of yeah. the parents intertwining and their story intertwining with the kids and affecting them because it yeah. really reminded me of that of course without Freddy Krueger um, but yeah it it totally gave me that kind of feeling i like too how um because a lot of times people don't realize like you say you have a you have a teenager who's 18 and then they go to college and then they're 19 (laughs) and it's like the amount of things that can go downhill Uh between you know it's like one minute we treat them like a kid and then the next minute they're supposed to be this adult and there's like all of these like adult issues and things that they're dealing with and like the effect it can have on mental health like I think I think she does a really good job reminding us that 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 that's gonna affect like um that that affects character development basically in real life and in novels so Karen and McManus, I think, reminds me the most of Christopher Pike. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to ask you, I wanted to talk to you about him because he lives in my mind as a complete legend. Like, mm-hmm. I haven't read a book of his in probably 30 years, but I still, I'm I'm almost afraid to. I'm afraid if I reread something, it's not going to hold up as well. But I just remember, like, him being one of the best the best writers. Oh, she's holding up one. What is, does that remember me? It's remember me. I bought this um, at my little used bookstore that I go to all the time. I was there looking through the YA section. Um, there's a whole room of what, that's just YA and horror, and it's heaven. Um, and I saw it, and I went, I haven't read this book in 20 years, and I have to have it. I have to have it. So <laughs> it's on my shelf. I have not read it yet. I did read The Midnight Club to prepare for the series that just came out. Um, but I, like you said, haven't read them in years, but lives in my head as a legend. I bet some of these, I, I bet some of these authors are probably inspired by him. I would be surprised if Karen and McManus is not. It has to like be. just the types of things that she's writing about. Um, and the way everyone's so intertwined. Um, okay, and now there's, um, I've got three more authors that I have not read yet. Well, I, I take that back. I've read one book about one of these authors, but I wanted to kind of get your get your input on whether I should, I don't know, <laughs> read, more of, <laughs> read more of their catalog. Um, and it's Lucy Foley, Alice Feeney, who I often think are the same people because sometimes their um, covers look very mm-hmm. similar, and Simone St. James. Okay, so Alice Feeney, I have not read any. Um, I okay. have a couple on my um, wish list on Libby, but I have not read any of those yet. Lucy Foley, I have read the guest list, mm-hmm. and it was good, but it hasn't had me rushing out to the, read the rest of hers. You know, yeah. I I was like, okay, I, if one comes across, I'll read it. You know, if one's available when I'm looking for something, I'll read it. Simone St. James is fantastic. Um, the Sundown Motel is mm-hmm. amazing. It is so good. Um, and then I listened to the audio book of The Broken Girls, and it was good. It wasn't as good as the Sundown Motel, so I would definitely pick that one up. 
Okay. Then there's but. another one of hers called The Haunting of Maddie Claire that I am interested in. I need to get that one. I'm in Book of the Month Club, and I've, I have books by all of these authors from Book of the Month Club. Um, and the Simone St. James title I have is The Book of Cold Cases. Yes. So that's I have not story. read that one. I had a friend that read that one said because she had read The Broken Girls because I told her to read it. And mm-hmm. she said that she didn't care for the Book of Cold Cases as much. So I told her to read The Sundown Motel, and she said, oh, this is much better. <laughs> Okay, I'll keep that in mind, too. So if I don't like the Book of Cold Cases, I won't just stop there. Um, Alice Feeney, um, I actually have two books of hers. It feels like I have not been in Book of the Month Club very long. But then again, the stack by my bedside would tell me otherwise. But I have gotten Daisy Darker and Rock, Paper, Scissors Mm -hmm. um, from her. And she's the one you said that you have not read yet. I have not. Those are both in my um, to to read lists both on my wish list for my Libby account, but I haven't read any of them yet. Okay. And then um, the only Lucy Foley book that I've read is also the guest list. And it's, it's funny. You said like it didn't make you rush out and read her next one. It didn't me either, but it made me reread. And then there were none by Agatha Christie because I hadn't read it in so long. And it's and, like there's so many things inspired by that, like that you forget over the years, when, you know, because it's been so long since we've oh, had yeah. to read that in school. And there is a there's an author, a YA author I like called her name is Gretchen McNeil. And she did a book a few years ago called Ten. And it is a YA retelling of and, uh, and then were there, and then there were none. And I, I mean, I can remember the first time I read that book, I found it at my grandmother's house. It had belonged to my mother. And she's like, I read that. Um, and I loved it. Even like probably 10 years old, I loved it. Um, and then I try to read it every few years. So I had just had my rereading probably right before I read the guest list. And I was like, oh, yeah, this works. <laughs> <laughs> it still does. It's a good formula. So now I want to know, like, what what are you reading next, like, from right. this genre? So um, I just finished, okay, I'm loving Ruth Ware. I love Ruth Ware. I started with In a Dark, Dark Wood, um, and then I've read a couple others. But this week I have finished Turn of the Key and The It Girl. I've actually finished that one last night. Turn of the Key is one of the best books that I've read in a while. And I really, really, I mean, I was reading that and fairy tale at the same time. And I was like holding both of them going, these are so good. I don't know what to read next. So um, those are so, so good. Um, So I am looking forward. I have another one of hers, The Lying Game, um, that I'm looking forward to reading. Right now I'm in the middle of misery because I realized I had never read it. What? Um, So, yeah, I... I had realized, so about two months ago, I was sitting here and I went, I should watch Misery. And then as I was watching, I went, I haven't watched this since the day it came out. (laughs) So I thought, okay, well, you know, I read the book and then I went, no, I've never read this. So my next little trip to my little used bookstore, I go to the Stephen King corner um, because my husband says you can't leave that place without buying at least one Stephen King and I have done it one time um but I grabbed that one and I said that's going to be on my list this year so I'm in the middle of that and then I just started another YA author I like um Natasha Preston I just started her book The Cabin on um so you were talking about being in book of the month club I was in between. I was like, do I want to join that or do I want to do Kindle Unlimited? And then I saw that Kindle Unlimited had a ton of authors that I've started reading because of the worst influence in the world, Book Talk. I spend hours on Book Talk just taking notes, just whatever somebody will tell me to read. So there's two authors on there that they that I heard about from t- Book Talk, Chevy Stevens and Lucinda Berry. And they're, Lucinda Berry is, she kind of goes on that edge between thriller and horror. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. to the point where you're reading it and you're going, this is terrifying. Um, Chevy Stevens is straight up thrillers. Um, her book, Always Watching, terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. And she can write gore almost as good as Grady Hendrix. Wow. Yeah. So I'm reading those two right now. And then coming up, I bought one today called Suburban Hell um, at Target. And I thought, oh, this looks fun for um, spooky season. And then I'm looking forward to Rachel Harrison's books, Cackle and Such Big Teeth. I like to book The Return. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading both of those. Awesome. I just got um, The Devil Takes You Home. By, okay. I think it's like Gabino Iglesias, I think is yes. the, the author's name. Um, and I've heard super good things about it. And then I also have The Paul Bears Club. Yep. But Paul Tremblay, have you read it? I have. I know nothing about it except that not, it was. I haven't read any of his. But everybody, everybody again with a book talk. Everybody yeah. in book talk says if you read these books and it's everything that I read, you should read Paul Tremblay. So I have those on the list. I just haven't made it there yet. Just haven't got there. <laughs> haven't gotten that far on the list yet. Mm-hmm. The the last thing that, well, and I'm currently working my way through these, um, James Tinian IV is a graphic novel author who I have fallen absolutely in love with. He did a series called The Nice House on the Lake. The person who recommended that was like, you would, if you like that, you're going to love Something is Killing the Children even more. And that's what, I mean, I can't put it down. It's so good. I um, mean, those are, those are both graphic novel series. I've, so I read a lot of graphic novels lately. Um, I work with somebody who um, that's kind of like his specialty. So he knows everything before it comes out. And then and he okay. knows what I like. And um, and so he, he does a really good job recommending things. But those are definitely two of my favorites that I've, I've been reading this year. Um, okay. So you want to stick around for our next segment where we do some book news and recommendations? Absolutely. All right, we'll take a quick break and come right back. I'm back with my guest, Krista Martin. We are going to now talk about some book news and just some general recommendations of things that we think um, our listeners will enjoy reading also. Uh, The first thing I want to talk to you about, Krista, is, and I'm totally putting you on the spot because... When I read through this list, I was deeply ashamed of myself that I had not read any of these books. But the National Book Award finalists have been announced. Oh. Uh, yeah, and I have I, I, I jotted down the ones for fiction. Okay. Um, it, and the first one is The Rabbit Hutch by Tess Gunty. We have The Bird Catcher by Gail Jones. The Haunting of Haji Hotak and Other Stories by Jamil Jankochai. All This Could Be Different by Sarah Thanka Matthews and The Town of Babylon by Alejandro Varela. Have you read any of those no, books? I am not. I told you I am much read. I'm not well read. <laughs> that is not it. I was like, okay, where are the vampire books and the uh, YA books? Where are these? Because those are the ones I read. <laughs> well, I. I the real shameful part for me is like, so I, I, I read, I've, I said this, I think in our last episode, the, I read a lot of nonfiction and I kind of have to f- really make myself read fiction. It's not that I don't enjoy it. I just, I will just read nonfiction and not realize that I haven't read a fiction book in three months. Um, so well, I felt like I sh- they should have at least been on my radar as a librarian. I had not heard of any of the um, nonfiction books either except for the one um there's one about george floyd that okay. was on the bestseller list yeah that that was so i was like okay well i should definitely know these because this is more in my line of work but okay well you just made me feel better good i, I know <laughs> i i never expect to read anything that is comes out for any kind of award unless it's like you know the 
BuzzFeed Award or something. I can, I, can, I, I can nail all of those, but never, not a National Book Award. Not gonna, not gonna read this. Like maybe an adapted something for the Oscars, maybe. Absolutely. And you were talking about reading nonfiction, and I, um, I am. It's pretty shameful for me that most of the the nonfiction that I do read um, are celebrity memoirs. Uh, in fact, I would say 99% of those are going to be celebrity memoirs. And some of those, you would question the celebrity part of it. Um, so I applaud you on your nonfiction reading. I, was, I need to, I've got to tell you this or it will haunt me. So you talk about celebrity memoirs. And I know that you are also a, um, a Real Housewives fan, Absolutely. as am I. Um, I get a lot of my recommendations from Caroline Manzo's Instagram because she'll just go to Barnes and Noble and she'll buy a stack of books and then she'll come home and she'll take a picture of all of them and be like this is what I'm reading and I'll just go through the stack and see what I want to read because she's my favorite. I'm embarrassed her. that I don't follow her on in, in, um, Instagram. We're going to take care of that tonight because I, <laughs> I need that in my life. She has she has really good recommendations. Awesome. Um, Okay, so we will shift on to <laughs> to some um, some more book news that I am deeply invested in. Uh, so the Queen is dead. I'm sure you heard. Yes, yes. Um, and this has affected the release of Prince Harry's uh, uh, memoir. We were supposed to be getting it this fall. Now it's been pushed to 2023. Like I said, I don't read a lot of nonfiction. I don't read a lot of books about the royalty about the crown um i'm going to read that when the second it comes out <laughs> yeah like i want to be standing there like when it is put uh, out in yeah, barnes and it, noble it's gonna be very similar to another harry i can see myself trying to go in midnight like we did with harry potter <laughs> Well, and the um, the fact that he got such a huge advance, which yes. some people are coming out and saying there's no way that he got an advance that big, but it's there. Allegedly, he received a twenty million dollar advance that is part of a thirty five million four book deal. So for him to get that for the first book, he is going to be spilling mm -hmm. spilling mm -hmm. some, some tea. Very exciting. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I can't, I just cannot wait. So for any of our listeners who are also into, um, I don't know, what do you call it? Royal watching. It's kind of a sport for me. It really is. It really is. <laughs> um, I have, um, I've got three books here that I would recommend. Uh, these are not, uh, hairy content heavy is the only thing. These are going to be more of like, um, the history of Windsor and more about like Elizabeth in the earlier years and stuff. And the first one is Game of Crowns, Elizabeth, Camilla, Kate, and the Throne. It's by Christopher Anderson. Um, so that one does talk about Kate and William a good bit. Um, I think it's like the latter third of the book. Um, but I did not know very much about Camilla Parker Bowles, except mm -hmm. that we didn't like her and then mm -hmm. we did because the Queen said we could. Um, but it was riveting. That was the best part of the whole book because you, I just found out all kinds of history about her. I didn't know. The second book, and this is a, two, I think it's two, it's two volumes now. I don't think they've released a third volume, but The Crown, The Official Companion. Oh, if you're okay. a fan of the, yeah, if you're a fan of the TV show, this is really good because it, it'll discuss like places where the show has taken creative license. Um, and it goes a little deeper into the history of the Tom, like, like what's being depicted on the show, but more of a deep dive, so you have a full, a fuller, fuller extent of knowledge of what's going on. And then the last one is the Palace Papers Inside the House of Windsor: The Truth and the Turmoil by Tina Brown. Um, Tina Brown was a Vanity Fair writer for a long time, and I will read anything she writes. And she, she she did a really good job with this book, and it was on the um, bestseller list for a very long time. So on the nonfiction bestseller list. Okay. I, I hear my dog mm -hmm. getting very upset that I'm still podcasting. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up with just some general recommendations. All right. Uh, you can give us some, some fiction recommendations. Okay. All right. So my first fiction recommendation, and I'm not sure what the, um, what the parental advisory is and um, the cursing on this show, but I'm going to have to say the name of the book. It's Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder, and this book is phenomenal. Anybody that is a 
um, of a childbearing age or has had children or is thinking about how, having children needs to read Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. It is fantastic. Um, okay. My second one is The Appeal by Janice Hallett. Um, it's more of a murder mystery and it is done in an epistolary style. So it's not straight, you know, written fiction. It is done in, um, noted, in notes and in like prose almost in parts of it. And it is so fun because I got into over the pandemic, I really got into um, watching Columbo and watching old like 70s murder mysteries and like Agatha Christie movies and things like that. And this is perfect for people that like that kind of stuff. Okay. And what was the author's name? Um, Janice Hallett. Janice Hallett. Okay. All right. Then we're going to go YA for um, We Ride Upon Sticks by Quan Berry. And it is a YA, um, very fun novel about a group of um high school girls that think they're witches and it is perfect for spooky season it is very cute it is very sweet and it is just a really quick fun read okay how many have i done i've done three all right that's so a few years ago everybody in the world was so like crazy about daisy jones and the six mm -hmm. and i read it and i was like this is great it's like you know it's like almost famous this is fun i liked it but then I read the final revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton, and it was so much better. <laughs> so much better. Um, so I have to recommend that. And then for my last one, I have to recommend, just because I talked about her earlier, The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry is so scary okay. and so tense and so nerve-wracking that it's anybody that likes very tense, taut thrillers needs to read Lucinda Berry. Um, my two fiction recommendations for this month, um, one is, it, well, it, it came out in the last few years. It's not a brand new novel, but and they actually already released a sequel, but Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. Um, anybody who liked the Netflix movie with Sandra Bullock needs to read the book. And then the next fiction novel I have is called 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard. This was a Book of the Month Club selection where I didn't recognize any of the books. So it was just like, this one sounds interesting. I mean, it was very good. And it's about um, two people. It's a couple who meets um, like days before the pandemic shuts everything down. And they've really hit it off, and they're like, you know, what better time than to see how compatible we are? So they move in together, Ooh. and it's one of those who is the, it, the it's told from both perspectives, and somebody is not who they seem to be, and you can, and you just spend the whole book trying to figure out which one of the people it is. Um, and that was Fifty Six Days by Catherine Ryan Howard. Okay, so what are your nonfiction? All right, recommendations. So my first nonfiction, and I know you as a librarian. I know that you you are probably asked about this book every single day because everybody I have talked to that either works in a library or a bookstore, they're like, everybody wants this book. Um, and it's I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Yes, yes. You know, I love a celebrity memoir and her story and everything behind the Nickelodeon years is fascinating to me. Um, so reading that was so eye-opening and it is so just harrowing what she's been through and to still mm -hmm. be fairly sane <laughs> um yeah it's, it's just you can tell that the writing of this book is so therapeutic to her um it's it's fantastic it is i haven't i haven't read that one yet but I, you said that about like how librarians and booksellers like have been inundated with requests for this and they have and i really feel like part of the reason is because amazon sold out so what so happened quickly, yes. it, it i went to the day it came out i just went on my library website and put it in my wish list and put a hold on it and it said your hold um will take 36 weeks and i went mm, okay i'm just gonna buy this so then you couldn't get it on amazon you couldn't get it like all the bookstores i called around here could not get it so then i waited a couple of days and i went back to amazon and i finally found it and so i ordered it there because i had saw that a friend had gotten it from there so i went and ordered it and it 
every bookstore was completely sold out. I know my little lo local store that I go to the most had it the last time I went, but they had one copy. And they're like, we don't know when we're getting the next one. So this one's right here if you want it. But it is worth the hype. And that's, I'm glad my mom is dead. I'm glad is my mom that? died by Jeanette McCurdy. I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. Okay. So my What's second your next one? one, and I, you know, I did sing the praises of Grady Hendrix earlier, but didn't recommend a book by him. But now I am um, because he wrote a nonfiction book. Um, called Paperbacks from Hell, and it is a history of the crazy, wild horror books of the 70s and 80s. And it is, it's going into, it's reviewing the books, it's talking about just the crazy covers, it shows the covers, and it is just a fun read, but it's also for anybody that likes horror to kind mm -hmm. of look at, because, you know, I can remember when I was a kid and I would go to like the grocery store or Walmart or something, and you would go to the book section and you would see these wild horror covers. And it's about that. And it's very nostalgic for me, but it was also really cool to like go through and go, oh, this is something I need to read. So <laughs> yeah. that one is it's so much fun if you like horror. All right. My third one is um, completely opposite, but also still firmly in that celebrity memoir. Um, what well, kind of celebrity? It's, it's written by a celebrity. Um, Amber Ruffin, who has the Amber Ruffin show on Peacock. And if you've never seen it, please watch it because she deserves her own network uh, late night show. She's fantastic. She used to be a writer for Seth Meyers, um, and she wrote a book with her sister called "You Never Believe." You'll never believe what happened to Lacey, and it is about basically being um, an African American woman in a small midwestern town and the things that people say to her and the questions she gets asked. And it's just stories about her experiences. It is raw and funny and eye-opening that sounds good too really good go out and re read all of these okay books. and then i'm going to bring up one that you talked about on your last podcast but we have to talk about it we have to talk about the wreckage of my presence because it's the best yes. <laughs> oh yes i could do a whole episode we could. we could do an entire episode of just me and you gushing about the wreckage of my presence by casey wilson because it, i it. When she announced it was coming out, I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely going to read that. And I didn't realize how just obsessed with it I was going to become. I've read it twice, mm -hmm. and it will be read again. It's just fantastic. If you don't know who she is, it's still fun. If you do know who she is, it's even more fun. And when yes. you know, like reading through there, because I love comedy podcasts, I love comedy um, and so I'm going through and reading. I'm like, I know who she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I know who this ex-boyfriend is. Um, so it's it, just wonderful. Just so much fun. Yeah, I love that book. Um, she is on, what was this? What was the show? Happy, Happy Endings? Is that the name of the show? Happy Endings is my friends. Like how people love friends. I'm like that with happy endings. I own the whole series, but if I find it on a streaming ser streaming service, I'm going to watch the whole thing. It is, it, it's my comfort show. I love everything. Her character's perfect, but my Adam Pally is, I love him so much. And his character, Max, is the greatest thing in that show. I love, just, I love everything about it. You have to watch <laughs> it. It's on HBO Max. I love her so much. I've almost started hoarding her content. Like after reading the book, I like I, her book, I, I was like, I don't want to watch all of all of the show now because I still want to have some Casey Wilson laugh. Like I'm, I'm a super fan, super fan. And you know she's at BravoCon right now, and that I kills know. me a little and bit. I have somehow missed like seeing anything. I, I, actually, I think I've avoided looking on my Instagram for anything BravoCon related because I want to be able to like let it last and like watch videos for like days after it's over. Oh, uh, I should I should follow your lead. I, I just I want, I want to get on TikTok and watch everything. Um, 
Andy Cohen's baby shower, which I just sat with my phone all out. I mean, I didn't get a bed until like three in the morning because I'm sitting there watching videos. <laughs> We're definitely going to have you back for celebrity memoirs. Absolutely. Memoir. We need Absolutely. to do celebrity memoirs. Yeah, yeah. And my two nonfiction um, selections are actually not celebrity memoirs this time because I felt like you'd probably have that covered. Um, and the, the first is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara, a book that has been out several years. It's about um, the search for the Golden State Killer and just her obsession yes. with finding the killer, just kind of being like an armchair detective and it's it's so good, and it is one of the most terrifying books I have ever read in my entire life. It is, and I will tell you, when I was reading that, I don't usually get scared. I read a lot of horror. I read, a, you know, I do read some true crime. I watch a lot of true crime. Nothing scares me, really. I was terrified reading that. I couldn't, and the HBO show, I couldn't watch it. Because it gave me really like vivid nightmares. I was like, I'm done. I, I just, I, I can't do this. But it is, it's so wonderful. Just watching yeah. her, just reading through her process. And then just, it's terrifying. The, the true crime part of it is terrifying. Um, when I was watching, when, it, when I was reading the book for the first time, um, one of my coworkers <laughs> was reading it as well, and so was his wife. And we were all so scarred and terrified for like two weeks. So it's, his wife, this is, this is so funny, she started making the whole family sleep in the same room. So it was like the husband and the wife, and then they had a four-year-old and an infant, and they would just all pack into one bedroom and lock themselves in and finally he was like okay i'm getting like a security system installed because this is getting ridiculous oh, so, but they absolutely um i said i want security cameras i want you know the help button that i can hit i want the whole nine yards so that's <laughs> what we did <laughs> But it's a great book. Everybody it's should read so it. Good. And if you like true crime, it's all, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then my second recommendation this month is a graphic novel. It's Black Dahlia by Rick Geary, and it's, and it's just like a, a biography of the Black Dahlia. And it's not just about the murder. Um, it's about who she was as a person, kind of how she wound up where she where she did. And it just, it went in a lot deeper than I thought it was going to. And it was very good. It's short, it's quick read, um, but it's really good. And that's Black Dahlia by Rick Geary. Oh, fantastic. Because I'm fascinated with the Black Dahlia. So I will, I didn't know about that. And I absolutely will be picking that up. Speaking of, if you're going to bring up the Black Dahlia, so you did listen to Root of Evil podcast, right? I was just right? about to bring that up. <laughs> so in that podcast, do you know how Man Ray is kind of like a, a pretty big deal? Yes. So have you seen that there is a new book? It's Kiki and Man Ray. It's, it's mainly about like his girlfriend, okay. but it's like the relationship between um, him and her. And I'm going to make sure I told you the right title here kiki man ray yeah awesome i'm taking notes as we're talking because there are things now that i want to read it's by mark broad awesome. b-r-a-u-d-e so i doubt they'll talk about the um black dahlia but it's black dahlia adjacent so. and still fascinating still fun uh, still yeah. looks like something interesting to read <laughs> well krista thank you so much for doing this thank and you, i hope Jamie. that this you will so do this fun. again Yay, we had, a, we had a blast, and I appreciate all of your insight and the fact that you have read two million books and you remember um, what they were all about. <laughs> there are, and I will tell you, I don't remember, because there are books where I will say, oh, I haven't read that, and then I will start reading it and go, oh, no, I read that. Like, I have started reading um, a book called That Weekend by Kara Thomas, which is another YA author that's fantastic. I've started reading it, I've read it once all the way through and I've started reading it three other times because I forgot the name of it. Um, and so I've started reading it and go, oh no, I've already read this. So no, I don't remember them all. Um, okay, well, thank you again. And like I said, I'm having you back on. Absolutely. So I hope you enjoy I'm, this I am very anytime. much. I I would love to. This is so much fun. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, thanks, Krista. Okay, thanks, Jamie. I'm so excited to have my pal Oscar here to talk about some books for young readers. Oscar, can you tell everybody hi? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, like your, um, like what grade you're in, how old you are, what kind of books um, you like to read. I'm nine. I'm in fourth grade. I like to read like history of books about history. Books about history. Very cool. Um, why do you think you like to read so much? Um, I don't know. I just started, and it, like, takes up your time. Yeah. So, like, yeah. It's, just, it's like a fun hobby. Mm-hmm. I think I told you um, in an email before that sometimes it's really hard to get um, young kids to read. Yeah. Because I guess school kind of makes it, like, homework sometimes. Yeah, like, they might have a lot, or, like, they might just not, not like to read. Yeah. Do you have any advice for um, parents who might have kids who don't like to read? To like, maybe just give them a book and tell them to read it. They might end up liking it. Yeah. Do you pick out your own books or do you get your parents to yes. help you? Yes. Sometimes I get my parents to help me, but mostly I pick them out my own. Okay. And how do you find um, authors and books that you like to read? Do you just look at the covers or? I like read the back of the books because they usually like have a short clipping of the story and then like if it sounds good I read like the first few pages and then like if I like it I'm like can I get this yeah awesome awesome okay so you've got a few books to review for us today right Mm -hmm. yes so um give us the name of the book and the author and then tell us tell us a little bit about it uh, the first one is I Will Protect You by Ava Moses Kaur and Danica Davidson. Okay. Um, Ava is actually, the, like, this is historical stuff. <laughs> it's <laughs> about her and her sister um, here. Okay. Oh, I like and the cover. they survived the Holocaust. Okay. And it's, like, about her story and, like, how she lived under a Nazi regime. What's your favorite part of the book? I like at the beginning where they're kind of living on the farm. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you would recommend that to like kids your age and a little older, a little younger? Yeah, like who might not have heard about this history might like kind of be scared a little. Yeah. So like I would advise for like 9 to 12. Nine to twelve year olds. I think that is a very solid review, and I cannot wait to read that book myself. So, what's your next book? Um, the next book is Prisoner B zero um, B three zero eight seven by Alan Grotz. Um, it's about um, this boy, and they live under Nazi regime. Um, it's about like how he survived all ten, con- like he survived ten concentration camps, two death marches, like how he lived. He actually lived in like the Krakow jet- ghetto. Um, he survived that by living in a pigeon coop. Wow, that's interesting. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I think um, I think I've told you too. Like you and I would. You know how you and I would swap book recommendations through yeah. your mom on Instagram? <laughs> I had never heard of that author until you told me about him. So I've, thank you for that recommendation. That's how mm-hmm. I knew you were a good reader. I was like, that's a, that was a good recommendation. So what, you've got another book for us? Yeah, it's the third book. It's about 9-11. It's called Ground Zero. It's a, it actually has, like, it swaps from, like, person to person. One of them, um, Brandon, he lives in New York City during 9-11. And um, Reshima, um, Reshmina, uh, she is in 2019 Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Um, during, like, when the USA fought, like, their army. And uh, she rescued this soldier named Toss has um and like it's how they took care of him and everything and then like 
there ends up being a little twist at the end. Ooh, I like a twist. And that's an Alan Grotz book also, right? Yes. Okay. Is that the last one you got for us today? Yeah. Well, those were great recommendations, Oscar. I appreciate that so much. And I can't wait to hear what else you're going to have for us on future podcasts. Oscar is going to have a regular segment where he reviews um, where he reviews some some books for us. So thank you for being here. And I will talk to you next month. Okay. Bye. Welcome back to the Check Your Shelf podcast. I'm here with my husband, Corey Hanna. Hello. We're having book club. We're having book club in our dining area. Do you want to tell everybody what the book was for this month? Sure. We read Music is Music is History by Questlove, and it was awesome. So you liked it? Yeah. What did you like about it? Uh, I like how he framed things within a certain uh, year, and he, he didn't, like, he didn't spend too much time, like, going on and telling super in-depth stories like he's you know spent a handful of pages on each year kind of and moved on like i mean i think the most he probably spent was maybe 15 to 20 pages on a chapter it seemed like uh but he would start every chapter with sort of a breakdown of what happened that year that affected things in our culture like um i don't i should have written this down but i don't remember exactly what year he started but it was four or five years before he was born so it would have been what was it late 60s early 70s when he started um because he was born in 1971 right i know yeah so he started late 60s then feels like um but you know he, he would have one page just of here's facts of things that happened that year right and then he would have a story about something music related that was either echoing what was happening that year, like whether it was sort of protest songs or, you know, just similar, like things along that line. And like, um, talked about his experience of like in 2001, like what was going on the night slash, night before slash morning of um, the Twin Towers falling. And, uh, you know how that affected him and what he was doing that day and he still went out and bought records and bought a handful of records just so he could feel something that was one of my favorite parts i'm glad that you pointed that out yeah like he needed to have something like real and that he loved and that was like wasn't that like the the first place he thought to go yeah like he said he went out and caught a cab and there was like nobody in the streets and I thought that was pretty neat because, you know, people lean on music in times of trouble and hardships and things. And um, he had kind of been holed up for a little while. And when he finally got out, he's like, that day, he's like, I'm going to the record store. And I thought that was cool. Something else that I, I liked about kind of the narrative format is how, in addition to all of those things you just said, he still kind of works in his personal evolution with the music industry like it starts out with like him being you know young and and what his because his his dad was a musician yeah his both of his parents were traveling musicians and so then, he would spend time with his grandmother uh, listening to her records and eight tracks and things while they were out touring yeah and then as he you know got older and you know got into djing and then founded the roots and um, just his his evolution in the in the music industry and and I just thought it was really fascinating because I'm a big Roots fan but there was a lot in this book that I did not know like it was I just thought it was extremely well done was there anything about it you didn't like this is going to be nitpicky but um, because I listened to the audio book while I was reading the physical copy of the book I was looking at the pages for the most part there were a a few of the chapters that I only listened to the audio version of because I was in a car and had the time but he would change the wording sometimes (laughs) it was real nitpicky but it it got distracting for Mm -hmm. me yeah that's 
that's really i mean i wish you could have spent a little more time on some things uh but i get it you know you're you're trying to make it fairly succinct and you don't want to write a 700 page book about that sort of thing which he easily could i feel sure (laughs) i feel like you could um i think my only issue with it and it's not really an issue um i'm a little hesitant to recommend it to people like just as a recreational read he is obviously a music scholar and it is it it has a very historical tone wouldn't you say yeah and he doesn't he doesn't dumb things down a lot i don't think um i understood most of the references that i felt were kind of inside baseball Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know that most people i don't want to say most but a lot of people might not um there were some of those in there but that i mean that didn't bother me because i got them uh but i mean there were there was a lot of industry stuff in there that i really did enjoy reading about what surprised you the most about the book do you think um i you know that's i don't know that i there was one well this might be a little bit of a surprise was how the death of Kurt Cobain affected the roots as a band yes that was fascinating yeah uh you know just long story short it was basically tied to the fact that they were signed to Geffen Records and Geffen had already lost another major act I forgot what it was um but then when Kurt died somebody from the label basically was like hurry up and get your record done we need to get it out before Geffen pulls the plug on putting out more records, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, that they kind of, I don't want to say got rushed into it, but it was like, hey, you might want to go ahead and get this done post haste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was very interesting. I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, so if you could ask Questlove one thing, what what would you want to know or if there was like a part in the book that you could discuss with Questlove and have him elaborate on there was a lot of talk in there about Prince yeah and anything Prince related is is interesting to me that's one of the classes that he teaches like at the college level yeah he's got a class that's all it's all Prince I'd really I'd really like to to hear his insights on how he feels about any future recording or not future any previous recordings from prince's vault being released into the world because there was a there was a very specific reference where he's talking about i believe it was the deluxe version of sign of the times where at one point you know he was talking about the genius of prince and then when he heard some of the earlier less than fleshed out versions or different versions alternate takes of songs and stuff he was like maybe this is why because prince was so guarded with what he released for the most part right that maybe it was he didn't say that maybe this is why things deluxe versions like that shouldn't be released but maybe they should be a little more guarded right yeah um, because he was like, they just didn't quite hit the mark that you expect being a Prince fan. Yeah. And I thought that was interesting. Yeah. So how many stars out of five would you give it? Uh, I'd give it four. Um, I really, really enjoyed it a, a lot. Uh, I mean, I, I'm real quick to just overhype things. So, you know, I want to just give it five stars, but I also want to be... I want to hold I want to hold that five stars in very very high regard as well. So when I rate things five stars, it has to be a book that I want to reread like regularly. Yeah. That's kind of the gold standard for me because a lot of times like once I read something once, I'm good. Yeah. But same. just to have something that you want to read over and over. So this isn't necessarily a repeat read for me. I would absolutely listen to it again like if we were on a road trip just wanted something you know to to listen to um an audiobook i would i would do that um but i'm gonna give it four stars too so next month 
Do you want to know your assigned reading? Sure. <laughs> We're going to read a book that I have tried to read so many times. I've checked this out of the library so many times and I've never actually been able to like just sit down and read it. Um, but we're going to now. It's Broken Horses by Brandy Carlisle. Awesome. Do you like Brandy Carlisle? Uh, I want to say yes, but I'm going to be real honest and say I know very little about her. I know, <laughs> I know more about her side projects than I do her 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 projects like i know i've listened to the high women record a handful of times and um through the sirius xm lithium channel i've heard her with the remaining members of soundgarden performing uh some soundgarden songs yeah and she just killed it i mean just killed it on songs that I would be okay if I lived the rest of my life never hearing again because we've heard Black Hole Sun a thousand times, but yeah, she just absolutely nails it. She's awesome. Yeah. I think so. I could have thrown the TV away after we watched her on Saturday Night Live. Like, there was nothing left to see. Yeah, and that was she, that was excellent. She was amazing. Yeah. When she hits that note. Yep. Oh, she's so great. Yep. Okay, I think that I already love her. I think you're going to love her as much as I do after we read this book. Um, Everything that I've heard about this book and all of the reviews that I've read it's just it was really well received and excellently written so I'm excited so that's what we'll do next month awesome looking forward to it well thank you everybody for hanging in there with us for another episode of check your shelf we will be back next month with new guests new themes (laughs) new books just all kinds of good stuff we just don't know what that's gonna be just yet thank you everybody